हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू अब चैनल एजो डी आर डोंट फॉर गेट टू प्रेस द बेल आइकन फॉर मोर अपडेट्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव टोल्ड यू ऑल अबाउट मशीन लर्निंग एंड इट्स टाइप्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द फाइव लीनियर अजम्पन्स दैट यू मस्ट नो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विद द लीनियर रिग्रेशन लेट्स नो अबाउट द लीनियर रिलेशनशिप इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स लीनियर रिग्रेशन इज अ लीनियर अप्रोच टू मॉडल द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन अ स्केलर रिस्पॉन्स एंड वन एक्सप्लेनेटरी वेरिएबल The case of one explanatory variable is called as simple linear regression. For more than one explanatory variable, the process is called as multiple linear regression. To explain with the five linear assumptions, here I have taken the Boston dataset. The Boston dataset you can directly get from sklearn dot datasets import load Boston. I have stored that dataset in the Boston variable. After that, I have applied. the feature names to my boston dataset and my target variable here to my boston dataset now my dataset is ready the very next step is to get your x and y variable in x we will have all the feature variables and then y we have the outcome variable that we need to predict before doing with the five linear assumptions you have to create a raw ols model so here we need to add constant on our own Here constant means y intercept. Our equation is y is equal to m x plus c. So what we do is we add c feature to our data. We add it by using s m dot add constant. So here I have fit that model into a variable linear regression and then I have printed its summary. After you get your linear regression summary, the major values that you are concerned with is your r square and your adjusted r square. so the difference between the r square and your adjusted r square should be minimum that defines how good your model is the basic difference between these two is that whenever you add the features in your data set both of the values increases but adjusted r square only increases when you add relevant features to your data set that is the features that are contributing more to your outcome variable Now, as you will scroll down here, you will see your Durbin-Watson value, which will tell you about the autocorrelation in the data set. The Durbin-Watson test is used to know about the autocorrelation. The autocorrelation function is one of the tools that is used to find the patterns in the data. Specifically, the autocorrelation function tells you the correlation between the points separated by various time lags. So the value here ranges between zero and four. If the value of the Durbin Watson is between zero and two, it is known as positive autocorrelation. If the value is between two to four, it is known as negative autocorrelation. And if the value is exactly two, it means no autocorrelation. For a good linear model, it should have low or no autocorrelation. So, in a linear regression, we have seen here the Durbin Watson value is one point zero seven eight, which means it is between zero to two. That means it is positive autocorrelation. Now we will plot. For the residuals, in stat model only ECA dot API you have SMT graphic plot of ACF that is auto correlation function. Within this, you need to pass your resid that is your residuals. Linear regression was our model. Using the resid, you can pull out your all the residuals. They are nothing but the difference between your true and your predicted value. Lags is nothing but it is just the points that you want to see number of points that you want to see as it shows the cyclic pattern here it means the positive autocorrelation is there if it was negative autocorrelation can you tell me in the comment box that what pattern must be there the second assumption is normality of residuals for this we do the jark bera test for a good model the residual should be normally distributed The higher the value of jark bera test, the lesser the residuals are normally distributed. We generally prefer a lower value of jark bera test. For a good model, the residuals should be normally distributed. We generally prefer a lower value of jark bera test. The higher the value of jark bera test, the lesser the residuals are normally distributed. In the above linear regression summary also, we have seen the jark bera value to be seven eighty three point one two six. At five percent confidence, the significance is five point nine nine. In this case, the computed value of Jark Bera statistic seven eighty three point one three it is greater than five point nine nine. Thus, we reject the null hypothesis that the error terms are normally distributed. The third assumption is the linearity of residuals. 
Linearity means that the predictor variables in the regression have a straight line relationship with the outcome variable. To detect the non-linearity, one can inspect plots between the observed versus predicted values or residuals versus predicted values. So here we are checking the linearity of the residuals. Here I have done nothing but I have plotted a scatter plot between the observed versus predicted and the residuals versus predicted. In X I have taken all the fitted values and in Y I have taken my true values. So if the points are evenly distributed means that the residuals are linear. So here we can see that the residuals are linearly distributed. So simply here I have done sns.rec plot to plot this. You can also check this with the help of the p-value. If the p-value is less than 0.05, you will reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, you will accept the null hypothesis. The fourth assumption is to check for homocidacity. If the residuals are symmetrically distributed across the trend, then it is known as homocidacious. If the residuals are not symmetric across the trend, then it is known as heterocidacious. To check for the homocidacity, I have done the graph between the residual versus fitted and the next graph is the square root of the absolute of the residuals versus the fitted. So we have checked how a distribution is changing or not, the pattern is changing or not. We can also use two statistical tests like the Goldfield test or the British Pagan test. In both of them, the null hypothesis assumes homocidacity and a p-value below a certain level of 0.05. This indicates that we should reject the null in favor of heterocidacity. The fifth assumption is of no multicollinearity. Multicollinearity is a condition in which the independent variables are highly correlated such that the effects of the independence on the outcome variable cannot be separated. There should be no multicollinearity. One way to handle multicollinearity is to remove highly correlated predictors from the model. If you have two or more factors with a high VIF, remove one from the model. The square root of the given variable VIF shows how much greater the standard error is compared with what it would be if that predictor were uncorrelated with the other features in the model. So here I have calculated the VIF of these features. Here I can see that tax is highly correlated with the feature rad. So let's draw a heat map and see this. So here also you can see if you will compare tax with rad, then the correlation is so much high 0.91. So what you can do is to get the better results in the next step you can draw this tax. Now you will ask me that why only tax and not rad. Comparatively you can see here that the VIA value of tax is more than rad. So what I have done in the next step is then in X I have taken all the features by dropping the tax also and in Y we have our price. Now we have again created a summary model. So here we will see that the difference between the R square and the adjusted R square is reduced more. So this is how you will check your VIF again and again and again you will calculate your R square and the adjusted R square until and unless you get the minimum difference between them. So this is how you will build a good model. After iterations when you can see your R square and adjusted R square the value between them is reduced then finally you can fit your model. In the next tutorial, we will see how to fit that model and the implementation of the linear regression. Till then, stay tuned, like and subscribe to our channel EduDR. Thank you and keep learning.